Yo, what's up everybody? So you're planning a trip to New Zealand. Well, Yen and I have 10 tips to share with you to make your trip a little bit easier. So my biggest tip for you if you're coming to New Zealand is have some idea of what you want to see in particular because the North Island is extremely different from the South Island. In the North Island, you're going to find the three big city centres, Tauranga, Wellington and Auckland, as well as some geothermal pools in Rotorua, Hobbiton, which is a magical place, and you're also going to be able to reach the northmost accessible point, which is at Cape Ranga. All of it is super beautiful, and of course, don't forget the picturesque beaches that are dotted all along the coastline up in the North Island. Whereas in the south, you've got some amazing rugged landscapes. You've got Queenstown, of course, which is world famous for the remarkable mountains and the beautiful lakes in the town as well as be able to see Milford Sounds and glaciers. Christchurch is the second largest city in New Zealand and you're also going to be able to find that in South Island. You might even want to do both of the islands but you're just going to have to plan your time accordingly because there's a lot of space to cover in between. So here in New Zealand we've got four different seasons and it's the complete opposite of the Northern Hemisphere. So when the Northern Hemisphere is in winter, we're in summer and what I've got on is perfect for summer. Shorts and a t-shirt, some flippy floppies, and you're good. But in spring and autumn, it gets a little bit colder, and so... So here in the North Island, a hoodie will be fine, but in the South Island, you may need one more extra layer, maybe. And of course, in winter, it does get pretty chilly, and uh, we're gonna get Yen to demonstrate that. Maybe something like this, especially if you're really scared of the cold like I am. But in the South Island, it gets way colder, sometimes even into the negatives during winter. So, dress warm. Remember to book popular activities and accommodation in advance, especially during peak season, which is summer here in New Zealand. For example, when we went to Hobbiton, you can check that video out here, we had to book our banquet tour dinner about a month and a half in advance just to be able to get seats for that activity. So yeah, book early. New Zealand is known for being clean and green and we really want to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, when a family of UK people came to New Zealand one time and left trash like everywhere, New Zealand was so outraged that they publicly put them on the front of like the New Zealand Herald and it stuff made like that. Headlines. Headlines. So you yeah. Don't want to do that. <laughs> we get outraged when people start littering. Keep it clean and green. Another tip for you guys coming to New Zealand is to pick up a couple of Kiwi slangs, especially if you're going to have a yarn with us Kiwis, because otherwise we might sound a little munter to you guys. And there's some common phrases like, yeah nah, she'll be right, which are kind of difficult to explain, but one of our favorite YouTubers, How To Dad, makes a really mean ass video about it. You can check it out over here. For bugger, there's a lot of Kiwi slang words that you kind of have to get used to, especially if you've grown up living here, you just say them all the time anyway. Although New Zealand is generally a pretty safe country, you do still want to beware of petty thefts that can be a bit of an issue here, especially for motor vehicles. So don't leave any of your belongings or valuables in plain sight inside your car. And always remember, lock up, especially when you're visiting all these tourist sites. flexible way to explore New Zealand at your own pace is by renting a car and going around that way. Otherwise, you can get a motorhome. We have a fantastic camper van infrastructure here in New Zealand, and that will allow you to explore the smaller and rural towns which always hold some great gems. Another option is by going on a scenic rail. For the North Island, you have Auckland to Wellington, and for the South Island, Picton to Christchurch, Christchurch to Greymouth. And here in New Zealand, we drive on the left side of the road. Oh, and another way to get around is you can do a hop-on, hop-off bus experience. Do note though that in the smaller towns, that public transport is almost non-existent, so that's going to be pretty difficult to get around there. Last note, Ubers and taxis here are very expensive, so just be aware. So 
one of the big industries here in New Zealand is agriculture. We've also got a lot of beautiful forests. And so if you're entering New Zealand, we're really particular about whether or not you can bring any food. Basically, if you bring anything that you can eat, it's better to declare. Because if you get caught with something and you haven't declared it, if it's like even a piece of an apple, you can get up to a $400 to $100,000 fine for severe cases. Also, if you've got any outdoor equipment or tramping boots or things like that with some mud on it, you might have to be forced to clean it before you come into the country because cowrie dieback disease is a major issue here and we're trying to prevent that. Just another thing to know. One of the big things that you do need to think about when coming into New Zealand is how much your budget is going to be because things are kind of expensive here. Even a cheap backpackers will cost you up to 20 to 50 per night depending on the season that you come to New Zealand and a hotel will typically cost you anywhere from 100 to 200 dollars per night and once again that changes a lot. If you're staying in the small towns it's a lot cheaper, if you're staying in the bigger towns well it's going to be a lot more expensive. Other things you might want to budget are also transportation. So transportation can cost anywhere for $75 to fill up a gas tank on a small car up to $150 for a big car. So thinking about all those kind of things you then need to add on things like activities and meals. Meals typically range from $15 up to $50 depending on if you get a drink or not. When you do go to some of the more fancier restaurants they do have an option of whether or not you do want the tip. You don't have to though. I would probably budget on the low end, $100 to $150, that includes activities and transport and accommodation and food of course, and on the higher end, probably budgeting around about $150 to $250. Finally, New Zealand, besides from being home to some absolutely picturesque landscapes, is also a great place for adrenaline seekers. Things like skydiving, which both Yen and I have done before, as well as being the birthplace of bungee jumping. You can also do things like the luge, zip lining across some beautiful scenery. It's just a fantastic place for those people looking for a little bit extra on their holidays. And so if you guys have enjoyed this, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment, we always like hearing from you. And we're also going to leave some other videos here in a playlist, which includes a detailed cost of living, as well as some pros and cons of New Zealand, as well as some other videos here, which is kind of like 25 things that are famous to us Kiwis. All right, right now I'm going to go search for some cockles. You can get 50 cockles per person. That's my catch.